Hello and welcome back. If you're new, I'm Deirdre and today I'm doing my first catch up from Africa. And it's a little delayed, I admit, but I thought I'd have a little chit chat, say hello, see what I'm tell you a bit about what I'm seeing, about getting here, and um, and that sort of thing. So it's it's a long flight from Australia. I did uh, I think it was 16 hours from Melbourne to Dubai, then about four and a half hours in Dubai and then um, quite a long time on the tarmac before we could take off for Lusaka because somebody became ill and had to be ambulanced off and then the had to be taken out of the hold and all of those things that happened. So that was a few more hours, I was a couple of hours late getting down to Lusaka which is about I think a six and a half hour flight from Dubai. So Lusaka is the capital of Zambia and Zambia is a, a massive landlocked country in the centre of Africa. I'm here to visit family, so that's that's a first off. Would I have come here without family? I don't think so, and I w would have been my loss. It's uh, about 16 million people, 16, 17 million people approximately, uh, and a great number of them are very young. I think close to 50% of the population is under 15. But this is a country that is modernising and moving so fast that it has... I, it has a good chance, I think, of finding work for those many, many young people. What does it have? It has mineral wealth. When you go north, it's called the Copper Belt. Um, it is a line of hills that comes down out of the Democratic Republic of Congo into Zambia, and it's some of the richest mineral country in the world, and with big mines up there. Its river is the Zambezi. It's a massive river. There's a second one that's only inside Zambia as well, and I will put the name of it, you know, down here when I remember what it is. But mainly it's the Zambezi, and that's the the river that curls around, sort of wraps around Zambia as the, really it, it acts as a border. So to the north, it starts in Zambia and then flows to be the border with the Democratic Republic of Congo, the DRC, and then it comes down the side and around, so, and Goal, I suppose, and down into the southern part of Zambia, which is the border where it becomes the border with Zimbabwe. So these are the countries that used to be called Rhodesia, and that's Zimbabwe, and Northern Rhodesia, which is Zambia. That's the, the names of it when I was a child, but it has been an independent country since I think the mid 60s. So it's been fascinating to see the growth that has gone on here. There's just everywhere you look, there's building and road making and um, people hustling. They are hustling because there's nothing to catch them. Uh, if you get sick, somebody has to look after you and it's not the government. They're, they're too poor. There's terrible poverty here. However, there is increasing modernization. I mean, I have this, like the shopping malls and the shops, you could be anywhere in the world. The things that you can buy are just the things that you can buy the world over. The traffic is diabolical, but that's because everywhere you look, there are new developments going on and trying to clear the congestion from the centre of the city. So you know what it's like when you have roadworks <laughs> all around the city. That's what's happening here. So the traffic, I have to admit, it's I'm not driving here. Would I? Yeah, give me another month, maybe I would, but at the moment, there's no chance. It's like being in, in Italy and or even in Paris for the first time, you think, wow, how do these people survive? And they do. Somehow, most of the time at least, people manage to dodge each other and to find their way through. It's just, the, the traffic's a bit wild. That's just part of the, the appeal of the city in some ways. Like if you want to buy data for you, your phone uh, to top up the data, then you, when you're pulled up and waiting in a queue to get across a roundabout or around a corner, there will be somebody standing by the side of the road selling the little codes that you can put in your phone and and start your data. So you, know, you just get that done while you're waiting in the queue. You can buy all your vegetables while you're waiting in the queue and your fruit and things. We tend to buy bananas because they um, they are local and they come pre-wrapped. Uh, I like bananas for that reason. So we Bananas are a great thing to buy. Oh, the clementines are the most delicious citrus I think I've ever had. What else is wonderful food-wise? Oh, the coffee. And you all know I'm addicted to coffee. And it's my only addiction, I think. But it's uh, the coffee is magnificent. It's local. A lot of it is local. And it's fantastic. So if you ever get a chance to buy Zambian coffee, grab it. It's pretty special stuff. 
I think Nespresso is working, may even be working here in Zambia as well, but I definitely is working done in um, Zimbabwe. So that's a good thing uh, to keep people well employed. What else? It's tough to see the young girls who haven't had enough education and they miss out on education for all sorts of reasons. Their families are poor, this is particularly out in the rural areas, and because of that, the girl is the last person to get educated. They're also the first ones that they can marry off, and so that they are no longer a uh, cost to the family. And I don't mean that in a callous way, but it is just the reality for many young girls. They do, Zambia does have very, uh, a, a real problem with some of the youngest marriages in the world and all of the issues that come from that in terms of dying in childbirth and all those sorts of issues. However, having said that, there are excellent hospitals here, but I'm in the city. It's available here. Ambulance services, police, all the standard stuff. Maybe not at the same level as it is elsewhere. No, it's not, but, but the hospitals are good and for, for general things, they are perfectly adequate, but they're not available out in the countryside. The other reason, and this is one that's so able to be easily able to be fixed, the other reason that little girls miss out on going to school is when they start getting their monthly periods, they have to stay home because they can't afford to buy the products that they would need in order to be able to go to school. They can't buy sanitary products, they don't have the money. One of the things that the Zambian government has recently put into place uh, and it's slowly rolling out, but its heart's in the right place, is that for the rural and people who live sort of on the outskirts of the cities but not in the cities themselves, those girls will have their products freely available to them, special reusable products that mean that they're not, it's not an ongoing expense and they can, therefore, they will be able to go to school. So they're missing a quarter of their education because of that, having to stay home a week in every month, simply because of things that we take for granted. Um, stuff I've taken for granted. Wow, traffic lanes, there we go, that was one of them. Um, water, turning on a tap, um, I'm very spoiled in Melbourne. We have very, very good water. Here, um, we've got bore water, where I'm living, and son and his wife's house. So that's fine for washing and you know, showers and all the rest. But for drinking, we are buying bottled water, the big cooler type bottles. And it makes me so aware that I just turn on a tap. What else will I never take for granted? Oh, the power cuts. <laughs> oh boy. Now, this is a real story. Back in 1955, there's a massive dam built across the Zambezi River, Zimbabwe. And that gives the power to the country. However, over the past, what, 65 odd years, the, the spill has carved a, a crater below the dam. So even though it was built on bedrock, the bedrock has been eroded by the enormous power of the water over those years. And there is now a huge crater that is undermining the dam. The power of the Zambezi River is being held back by this dam that is weakened, very badly weakened. As a result, it is having to be worked on at the moment to try and support it again and to repair the cracks that are repairing, appearing in it. That means that as a country, Zambia and Zimbabwe, can't, they can't generate the power that's needed for the country. So we have what's called load shedding. And that effectively means that for every day, we lose power for four hours a day. And on a three day cycle, power goes off at 6 a.m. till 10 p.m. Then from the next day it will be 11 a.m. through to 3 p.m. And then the day after it's 5 p.m. through to 9 p.m. That, that last one, that's the hardest because of course it's right when you're cooking dinner or whatever. Now look, we go out, we can, we can do that. Um, and the food is inexpensive for us. But you have to remember to keep everything charged. Anything that you want done with power you have to remember. And you have to remember when you go out to put a torch by the door so that the minute you come in you can you have light because it's just pitch black. It's like you can't see your hand, you can't see anything, nothing in front of your face. It's just like black velvet. So yes, you can't function like that. They will set up um, an inverter so that they can pull some power off and charge batteries during 
the time when the power's on and charge the batteries up so that, and run the refrigerator and the TV and lights and things like that at night. For me, it just means I have showers later at night and that way I don't even have to think about showering in the morning because of course you can't shower when you have the power off because it needs a pump to push the water here. So there we go. Uh, that's the sort of thing you can't do. I'm going to go off on safari. Uh, I have actually seen giraffes grazing by the side of the road on trees of course not on grass and that was quite extraordinary they're thorny croft giraffes so they're the i think they're the shorter ones and they um it was just they're casually standing there just eating what i'm looking forward to is getting out into one of the national parks it's about an hour's flight in a small plane uh, up to the north up near the basically the border of mozambique and it's where there's an oxbow lake and there is apparently um, the most beautiful lodge there I'm told it's magnificent so the elephants just wander around it and that's pretty good that will be on next week there are things i want to talk about that relate to the things that i normally talk about on this channel such as decluttering downsizing because <laughs> man Nobody here declutters or downsizes. Well, the vast, vast majority have no need to do this. And the concept of living simply is just daily life. And I think I've got a lot to learn and I'd be really happy to share that as I sort of think about that more. Anyway, for now, I hope that if you'd like to see a little bit more, follow along. So I've still got another two and a bit weeks here. And uh, yeah, that would be wonderful. Uh, so subscribe give me a thumbs up if you like to hear about other places this one is about as far away as for me as i was going to get anywhere and i'll be back in the next one <laughs>